everyone, I am going to talk today about first year essentials and this could be first year for A-levels, GCSEs, high school or even a bachelor's degree like I've just studied. Now to make it a little bit easier, I couldn't actually find everything I wanted for this video so I'm going to do like a voiceover and show you images of the things that I would recommend to you for your first year. Now obviously this is going to vary from high school to like university standard but I just think that some of these things were very important for me and some of them weren't but they might be important to you. I think that it's just like a process of elimination for what is going to be suitable for your course. For example, on your course you might not need a sewing machine because you might have them at school and you might not have also the budget for it. I actually didn't have a sewing machine. Um, my one that I have at home is like one of the really like standard normal sewing machines that you would buy but I actually never used it for my course because it wasn't as good as the ones at school. So that's just an example. Alright, the first thing would be an academic planner. I think these are so useful because if you're doing multiple classes, like for example you're in high school studying textiles or fashion or art or whatever, um, I think balancing everything is quite a challenge. Sometimes your colleges will actually provide you with a planner. Um, my university didn't, but we got our own so that was fine but I think having planners is super useful especially for deadlines getting work done here and there making sure you don't miss anything yeah super super helpful I say this is the most important thing then starting with sewing kind of essentials now you can eliminate what you probably don't think you need or I would definitely recommend you go to your class for the first day and then see what you will need and what you won't I'm sure your teachers will give you a list um, just so that you make sure you're not buying things that you don't need and you're stuck with things that you don't use especially. So this is like a sewing box and inside you can just put lots of different things in it and you can carry it with you, take it with you. Um, most colleges will have this for you to use at school so you might actually not even need to buy this. But, you know, if you want to, you can, <laughs> or if you need to especially. So we've got an unpicker, needle and thread, pins, tape measure, tailor's chalk, which is used to draw onto um, fabric that you can't, like, pin or, you know, you need to, like, mark out darts and things like that. Fabric scissors, paper scissors, pinking shears, which I'll show you later on what they look like, but they just um, make sure that your fabrics are neatly um, cut on the edges so that they don't fray. It's a nice finishing method. Um, pin cushions to hold pins in, pencils, a pattern master as well. So a pattern master is kind of used when you're really altering a block or you're altering a pattern. It's quite, it looks quite complicated and I wouldn't honestly worry about this if you're like in a high school level. This is more, I think, university kind of standard. It's, I definitely didn't have a clue what this even was until I got to, um, universities so don't worry about a pattern master it looks very difficult but it honestly isn't it's one of the most simplest rulers to kind of use but it's mainly for actually like making a block from scratch or really altering a pattern so um, that's very very helpful though if you are going into a university course a tracing wheel is quite important I think especially if you're again making patterns from scratch or you're really trying to alter patterns if you're using like the ready-made patterns like these ones for example you don't really need them because everything's sort of been done for you in high school these are the only patterns I use but again that totally depends and varies on what you guys are studying actually let me know in the comment section below what you're studying if you are actually studying if you're thinking about studying fashion or you know, just let me know in the comment section below so I can get an idea of like what kind of age range this you guys are kind of more targeted towards if that makes any sense. I also forgot to mention fabric glue but this is um, pattern paper what you're looking at currently and they have like little dots on it so again this is for mainly drafting patterns or alternate, altering patterns or actually tracing off patterns so like the other pattern pieces I showed you which were kind of more of a thin tracing paper kind of style like baking paper <laughs> um, you can actually like use this paper to trace those off or to just I mean it's just a type of paper but yeah um, this I don't think you necessarily need to buy but if anyone was kind of looking for something like that then that is basically what it's called next up is sewing machine I don't think you have to buy one but I would say it's quite useful to have one I mean you just never know when you might actually need to sew something even at home like 
say one of your favourite dresses rips or you buy something that's too long and you want to alter it, you know, it's just a nice little thing to have at home just for your clothes in general. But um, I definitely would recommend just a normal little sewing machine that you can just kind of have, you know, you can practice things on it. If you have any work pending from school then you can do it on that sewing machine. I do love industrial machines though. So the standard ones you saw I had in high school and then the industrial and industrial ones we had in uni and honestly they are the best sewing machines in the world but they are super expensive um, so when I got to uni I actually didn't use my sewing machine at home which was the little one because it just wasn't as good and so I just spent all of my time sewing at school it was the, uh, like at uni um, it was just the best option that I had and um, I don't actually regret not having a sewing machine at home because I tried to really, again this is where the planner comes into handy because I just tried to balance everything so that I could just get as much sewing done at school and then at home I could do things like essays, my dissertation, all that jazz. And here is an overlocker. This is an industrial overlocker. These things are amazing. Didn't even know what really overlockers were until I got into like university college because we didn't use them in high school and no one ever really used to talk about them. But um, this is what like a standard overlocker that you can buy looks like. One of my friends actually bought one and it was super handy for her because she was kind of rushing for her deadline. And so she bought one of these really last minute and it really did like save her because thing is overlockers are not that common to have in your house, a sewing machine is more common but um, a great option to really finish off seams and things like that. I'm sure a lot of people do have sewing machines but if you don't then just consider how much you might use it or your budget as well and whether you really need one. This is just my experience. The other thing is a mannequin. This is the most helpful thing that I have bought during my uni years. I didn't have one during high school but a mannequin was just so, so important, especially for fitting the garments when I came to like sewing them, um, especially when I was pinning fabrics and cutting it out at home, I could see if it was really going to fit, if I needed to make any adjustments, I could pin the pattern to the mannequin and make any adjustments that I needed to do. I just found it so helpful, especially when I came to do embellishment on my final collection, which I, guys, which I will show you guys, gosh I can't even speak today. Um, it was so important for me to kind of have the right layout so I would pin the pockets onto the actual garment and then I would know exactly where they would go and then I would start doing some embellishment. Majority of the embellishment I did, I did at home. Not the sewing, but the embellishment. So again, super helpful even when I wasn't using the um, sewing machine for that whole aspect. Okay, let's talk about the more kind of design, art side to fashion. Maybe I should have talked about this um, first because this is kind of where it all starts. So, of course, materials. Now, this is a kids' um, art set, which I think kind of gives the main principle of what is handy to have in your kit. So, you don't need all of this, but of course, you know, all of these different types of medias will give you a very different look, texture, and of course, feel. So I would probably say that paint is very, very helpful. Any type of maybe watercolour or gouache acrylic paint, colouring pencils, oil pastels, um, normal pencils as well, but just different types of grades, very, very handy to have. And I'm going to talk about a certain type of marker in a second, but felt tip markers I think are quite good. Um, but I'm going to talk about Copic markers in a second. And fine liners and normal pens as well. Also fine paintbrushes, thick paintbrushes, even sponges to kind of build texture on different levels. Chalk, charcoal, also great options, graphite as well. But unless you already have these things, I wouldn't stress and buy everything. I think you should just do it as and when you perhaps need it. Um, especially if you're really into art, then you might already have some of these things or you might consider that you want to buy them. These I think are the best pens. These are fine liners and fine liners are so, so good to draw with because it's like the name suggests, it's fine and they're great for technical flats, great for drawing in general, you can do some great shading with it. I just think it's a staple to have even if you're studying something like art, des art design or um, graphic design. For fashion illustration in particular, I think that light boxes are really, really good. A fashion illustration or even drawing because you you can um, trace certain things, you can also use it to really get nice detailed shading if you put something underneath it as well, so it's just a really nice thing to have. 
Another really amazing tool for fashion illustration are Copic markers. Now, I have a full set of these which I've barely used. Um, if anyone is interested, um, then just email me um, and we can hopefully figure something out if you are interested in Copic markers. But basically, you can get some incredible shading on your fashion illustrations. They're super easy to use and to blend as well. There are tons of tutorials on YouTube on how to use these markers. I highly suggest you guys check it out because it's really good to kind of get in the um, way of practicing these markers because they look incredible like it's so professional so amazing um, and if you guys are only just starting out I mean imagine by the time if you guys want to do a degree by the time you get to the end of that degree you will have the most amazing fashion illustrations I think with these markers it really is practice so the fashion illustrations that I did which I will leave a link to my online portfolio in the description section below and also I did digital illustrations, so this is my Instagram, you guys can check out my work here, I have pretty much all my projects on my Instagram, and I did because I did digital illustrations, I'm going to talk about that towards the end of this video, since I didn't do as much hand drawing illustrations, I mean I combined both of them together, if you guys would like a tutorial on that, definitely let me know in the comment section below, but I would highly suggest you checked out the kind of illustrations I did, because they are not 100% hand drawn, if that makes any sense, quite digital. Things that are pretty self-explanatory, a sketchbook, obviously. Um, I would highly, highly, highly suggest that you guys waited until you did like your first class, unless they already tell you exactly what kind of sketchbook you need. I think A3 is such a fantastic size if you guys have the option to choose, because obviously you can make your own decision on this, but I think that it's just a really good size. I used to always love A4 sketchbooks, and when I was told that we should use an A3 one, I wasn't too happy about it. But um, I've got so used to working that size now and I just think it's fantastic because when you open it out it's great because you have so much more space and I think it's a nice size. But again, this is completely personal preference and of course the preference of wherever you study as well. For drawing, I think a layout pad is fantastic. This is just a thin type of paper. And very, very lightweight. It's kind of like normal paper but just thinner, so it's a little bit like tracing paper and I think that it's just really, really nice to work on this kind of paper. It's not like tracing paper. Tracing paper kind of is not really that opaque, but this is a little bit more opaque but you can still see lines through it. I just think it's a really nice type of paper. I think tracing paper is also great to have as well. And now for the adhesives. A glue stick. Definitely a must-have. Some scotch tape is kind of like a frosted uh, cellar tape, but it's amazing for fabric samples. I have a whole video on how to like finish the edge of fabric samples. I think it's the best method in my opinion. Also a great tape because it really, if you guys want to stick stuff on walls or you have your own desk spaces, this stuff really sticks on the walls and it doesn't like take any anything off the walls either, not that I have noticed. Double-sided tape, again, fabulous and also masking tape this stuff is literally amazing if you guys want to like trace something or you want to put it on your window masking tape won't ruin the actual page it's also really amazing for when you do patterns and things like that because you can stick the masking tape on and you can really easily take it off and you don't have to worry about your patterns ripping or anything like that really great for a lot of my art projects I used a craft nap uh, gosh can't speak Craft knife and mat. These are so, this was honestly so helpful for me, especially for screen printing because we had to do this thing where we had to expose our screens but we had to make different patterns with black and white paper and then we photocopy them and then get them exposed on our screens. And so to cut out all the shapes, I used to use a craft mat and a knife. And I actually used a craft knife and mat for a lot of other things as well. So this was super, super handy for me. But again, it depends what you're doing really. Oh yeah, and I did use them to make collages as well for like different prints, which I'd put into the scanner and then I would do like repeat patterns on um, Photoshop. I wouldn't say it's worth worrying about a portfolio for now, but a portfolio carrying case where you can put drawings and sketchbooks and other things that you have inside of it is probably quite handy, especially if you're going into a degree and you have stuff from your like foundation. Now, I didn't do a foundation, so I didn't really have that much stuff, but I know that a lot of people do a foundation degree and then do a, like an actual degree. So if you have like lots of big drawings and things like that, um, I'm sure you probably already have a carry case, but I think they're quite good because you can put a lot of the bigger scale stuff in there and um, it makes it a bit more handy, I think, to have that. 
especially when you come to do interviews and things like that as well. I saw so many people at Central St. Martin's carrying like a carry case. And then things to carry your work in. When I used to go um, to college, my friend used to have one of these trolleys because it was so much easier to carry it or by wheeling it rather than putting it on your shoulder. So she used to have one of these and it was so, so helpful for her. I never got around to buying one of them. I used to use just normal tote bags instead. So that way I had my own little handbag and then I also had a tote bag full of my sketchbook and materials and things like that that I was going to use, which just made it so much easier for me to carry rather than like just having one big bag with my drink in it and my wallet and everything else. So I couldn't, everybody that I knew basically used to do two bags. And then I just used to leave this bag in the classroom when we used to go for break and lunch and it just used to make it so much easier. You don't have to lug it around with you, um, depending of course where you study and um, how safe it is to leave things in the classroom. And now, finally, last but not least, finally onto the digital side of things. I think a computer is the most helpful thing to have a laptop, a computer, whatever you prefer. I personally have a MacBook and I think that they are really incredible. Now they are very very pricey so I that is definitely something to consider but a PC is just as good. I know some people prefer PCs over Macs anyways. I think these are fantastic because number one for essays, for dissertations, also digital work, artwork especially like Photoshop, Illustrator, this is a such a an important tool to have. People often forget how good and important a laptop is. If you don't have a laptop, an iPad is a great option. We actually got given one for free when we started our uni course, but I didn't use it because I had a Mac and I just preferred the Macs. But um, still, you can do a lot on there, especially for research. You can have Pages and Microsoft, I think, do a package on there as well. Um, Keynote is fantastic for presentations, but what I do want to say is that I do prefer Mac laptops and I'm going to be really really honest with you they are expensive and although you know you might justify the purchase as one that is there for life it really honestly isn't so many of the people that I know have including myself have had to you know get them fixed or I actually had to buy another one I had a MacBook Pro 13 inch and now I'm on the MacBook Pro 15 inch because I had so many issues with my um, MacBook but you know this honestly depends on the the person but especially when you're doing a lot of design work and you're using the processor a lot with Photoshop, Illustrator and doing multiple things that are really using the core processor it really does have an effect on the laptop so definitely you know just be aware that there can be better options like um, PCs as well and trying to get a better core processor and not just um, going for the cheapest option which might not have as much um, memory and space which is what one of my friends had an issue with um, she got the smallest I think hard drive laptop and um, she ran out of space so quickly and she had a lot of issues um, so yeah you know this can be a great amazing purchase but I think it's important to consider lots of um, other options and even other MacBooks as well. I think the Pro is actually the best for design. I know that when I have talked to a lot of people um, in the Mac stores and also Curry's, I think, and PC World, which is what we have here in the UK, pretty much everyone said that for graphic design, video editing, um, Photoshop Illustrator and Adobe programs, the Pro is the best laptop um, so that's just my recommendation to you if you guys are on the if you're on the lookout for a new kind of Mac or laptop the pro is the best one but again like I mentioned you know there are some issues that can arise with this laptop it can get expensive to you know fix it if it has an issue or if it breaks or something you can get student discount on MacBooks, so highly highly suggest you guys check that out I actually got a custom build done on my second MacBook because my MacBook, honestly, the first one, I just, I st even I started running, running out of space on that one. And um, this one, haven't had a problem with that, but I'm sure if you guys have listened to the whole video so far, you could probably hear a fan in the background, and that is trying to cool my laptop. So I'm still having a few issues with this laptop, and I only bought it this year. But apart from that, yeah, definitely um, keep a look out for student discounts. I mean, they offer them pretty much everywhere, I believe, with... Um, you know, the fact if you're a student. 
Aside from that, it is a fantastic, fantastic laptop. The other final thing I want to talk about, my laptop is actually overheating right now because I've been talking for like the last 20 minutes, is Microsoft programs. These are absolutely fantastic to have. Now these don't actually come on iPads or MacBooks. I think that some laptops do have it, like PC laptops do have like a trial, but Macs definitely don't and they are a bit of an investment, but I think they're fantastic because Word, PowerPoint, just really simple basic things that I have used throughout the entire course for presenting my work and also for essays and dissertations and you know research and all that kind of stuff. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe for more. If you have any um, suggestions for any more videos, let me know in the comment section below and I will see you guys very, very soon. Also, good luck to anyone that is going to be starting a course uh, this year or next year or if you're thinking about it. Um, all the very best and if you have any other like questions, let me know. Bye!